Of course, the lunar landing in 1969 was the final end of all the efforts that had been put in the development of uh, initially missiles, and later on as NASA referred to them as launch vehicles. Uh, I have been working on rockets for many, many years. I worked on them before I joined von Braun in Peenemünde. And of course in Peenemünde one of the highlights was the first successful launch of a V2. And I think even today I can still say that was probably the greatest moment in my life. But something that comes definitely very, very close to it was of course a lunar landing. Uh, for the actual launch I was myself at the Cape. I had been initially even the deputy manager of the uh, uh, launch vehicle part of the program, the Saturn program. And uh, for that reason, of course, I was highly interested. I was greatly pleased that it was a successful launch. You may know that some of the earlier Saturn V's has, uh, had provided quite some problems. We had a pogo stick problem. The lunar lander even uh, showed up some of these type of technical problems. So it was really a very great accomplishment that with all the additional testing that had been done in the meantime, that we had a successful launch, we had a successful lunar landing. As I just said, I saw the launch at the Cape, but uh, right after the launch, of course, I came back to Huntsville and I saw the landing on television, because unfortunately, of course, I couldn't be there. I would have liked to be, but that was just not possible. Of course, for the lunar landing itself, I was down at the Cape. I watched the start of the Apollo launch vehicle. And shortly after the start, uh, I came back to Huntsville. And of course, I observed the landing on television because there was no way to actually be present at that time. On the other hand, even today, I'm still convinced that this was really a very uh, successful ending of all the efforts that had been put in the development of launch vehicles up to that time. Uh, when I became interested as a young high school student in space flight, it was always our dream to leave the Earth. And of course, uh, the idea was always to initially conduct a lunar landing. And even today, I still feel one of these days we will go with manned launch vehicles to Mars and eventually populate the entire solar system. And this, of course, was the very first step in that direction. And I was greatly pleased that everything worked all right. Although, as you probably know, there were quite a number of earlier problems with the launch vehicle. But uh, due to the very thorough, very sound approach going step by step into the program, uh, I think that's one of the reasons that it was a successful launch. Of course, one big reason for successful management was Werner von Braun himself. He uh, laid out the program, basically, of course, with the consultation of many other NASA centers. So it was not only Huntsville that was involved. He worked very closely with the manned uh, spacecraft center in Houston, which was not the Johnson Center in those days. It was just the manned spacecraft center. Uh, von Braun also was an excellent manager. He was not only a very good engineer, but he also knew how to set up a system where he could delegate responsibility. He delegated responsibility to people who had shown that they could, uh, on the one side, technically master the job and that they were also good managers. And of course, we had a relatively large system of management established, starting in NASA headquarters. George Muller was the actual head of the overall program. And of course, all the centers reported directly to him. And uh, through that uh, scheme, that uh, in a way triangular management scheme, I think it was a very successful program. And many people have even tried to build up similar management systems for the management of other more earthbound uh, problems. Well, he was not only a good engineer, and he certainly was a good engineer. He saw the problems. He came up with solutions to many of the problems. He was also a good manager, uh, as uh, just indicated. And over in and beyond that, he was also an excellent salesman. Uh, he was really the one who in Germany convinced the German army to support his ideas of spaceflight. 
Of course, he could not call it space flight in those days. It, uh, he had to admit that the initial step into space would be the development of a military vehicle, the A-4 as we called it, uh, later on better uh, known as a V-2. He uh, initially developed smaller vehicles. There was, of course, an A-1, an A-2, an A-3, and even an A-5, because a step from the A-3 to the A-4 would have been too great. And von Braun recognized these problems, and he came up with proper solutions. And uh, as I said, he was also a good salesman. He could convince uh, people in power, people who had the money, that his ideas were right, that they should support these ideas, and make the necessary funding available. Yeah. To develop such a launch vehicle system requires tremendous facilities. So you have to spend uh, uh, considerable amounts of money to build up these facilities. From Brown always put very great emphasis on ground testing, because once your vehicle is flying and you have a problem, there is not much you can do about it. Once you test it uh, in a static firing condition, on one of our big test stands here at Marshall. Firstly, of course, you can afford to make many, many more measurements. You normally save the vehicle. Your vehicle does not necessarily uh, completely fail and blow up. You can correct the mistake and you can, in another test, demonstrate that you have solved the problem. And that's what von Braun did also very extensively for the Saturn V program. The booster for the Apollo venture was initially an army idea our army commander at the time when we still worked for ABMA here was General John Bruce Medeiros. And he saw the need for big space boosters. He knew what the Russians were doing. And of course, the entire start of the program was definitely an outcome of the space race. Many people felt that we should uh, uh, try to beat the Russians, to best the Russians, to do more than they were able to do. And of course, in order to do that, uh, there was definitely a need for a relatively large space booster. So the Army initially started the Saturn I. It was later on improved to the Saturn IB with a much more powerful second stage, which in a way used really the third stage of the Saturn V. And then, of course, the Saturn V was in a way a completely new development. But von Braun had laid the groundwork. He had a management team that could uh, uh, handle all the pro uh, problems. And I would also like to point out that uh, this entire project, of course, was really a nationwide project. Many major contractors were involved, and without the help, and also the uh, training and the schooling of these contractors, it would not have been a successful program. And again, von Braun saw the need for all these things. He uh, laid the groundwork to uh, prepare for all these uh, necessary preparations and I think that was a big part for the success of the program. I personally, and I can only speak for myself, I was really not all that much affected by all these other program, uh, problems. Of course, I knew about it, but we were all so busy preparing for the lunar landing that we basically had no time to worry too much about these other problems. We knew that this project had to be taken to a final successful end, and so we really put all our efforts, all our uh, hours of work into the solution of the problems which still existed. And again, I think we have to give von Braun credit that he maintained the spirit, that he held the team together in spite of major problems. Uh, you probably have talked already in other sessions about the Apollo fire, which of course was a very big problem in the entire project, and there existed a great danger that the entire project might still have to be cancelled, because other problems existed, like the Vietnam War that was going on, that required tremendous funding, and of course uh, the Apollo fire uh, also increased the total cost of the Apollo program. Uh, considerable changes had to be made, again from Brown saw the need not only to make the changes on our own launch vehicle, which in a way was really not involved with the fire, and he made his deputy Eberhard Reis available to work with North American and with the Manned Spacecraft Center to solve the existing problems. So von Braun was not limiting his effort only to the launch vehicle, which was really his responsibility,
but he again saw the need that the entire program has to be supported. And he provided this support. And uh, besides Ries, of course, also a considerable number of our people, particularly quality control people, were involved in order to solve this problem. Of course, from Braun, uh, I think he was a good family uh, head. So he was even always concerned that he couldn't spend as much time as his family as he really would have liked to do. But he saw the need that uh, the program, the project, really required his full support. And von Braun also worried quite a bit about the people. He was, for example, the one who installed the Marshall Picnic. He was the one uh, uh, who established the local university, uh, which uh, today is, of course, the University of Alabama in Huntsville. In those days, it was just a very small sub-branch of the university in Tuscaloosa. But he saw the need that his employees, on the one side, needed additional schooling. And he also wanted to provide for our kids this uh, uh, educational uh, capability. Von Braun also, of course, was quite active in all civic affairs here. So he was not only a good uh, team leader for the technical activities, but he also saw the human needs that are connected with such a major project. I personally think mankind will eventually land on Mars. We will eventually settle, um, not necessarily the planets, but some of the major moons. There are some moons around uh, uh, Jupiter, which uh, might be suitable for a, a human occupation in a way. And I personally am convinced that mankind is moving in that area. We are not only Earth-bound, as the old uh, rocket pioneer, the Russian Tsiolkovsky, said, the Earth is a cradle of mankind, but you cannot spend your entire life in the cradle. You have to move out of the cradle. And I personally am convinced we are going to do that. And of course, the Apollo program is a real good start for this move into the realms of, uh, initially, of course, just the solar system. I think it will take many, many generations before we move with man beyond, beyond the solar system. I am convinced it is still the biggest step that mankind has ever taken uh, in the development of the Earth. Other major events may have taken place, but controlled by mankind, it is a first the biggest step. And although I believe that we eventually are going to move on, I think it will be the big step for many, many years to come. I personally don't think I see the return to the moon in my lifetime. I don't think I see la uh, man landing on Mars in my lifetime. And so uh, in my own career, that was really the highlight. This was the high point. And uh, as I said, I think it will be the high point for all of mankind for many years to come. So it was really a big leap for mankind, as Neil Armstrong said. And we have really learned an awful lot about the Earth. If you can observe the Earth from orbit, you can see quite a bit more than if you limit all your observations here only to Earth-bound activities. So we understand the Earth much better. We understand the effect of the Sun, the Sun's radiation on the Earth's atmosphere, which is really uh, tremendous, uh, which is much more than uh, practically most people had uh, expected initially. In fact, I personally am convinced that the breakdown of the Russian Empire is in a way due to our communication technology. The people on the other side, particularly in East Germany, they saw what was going on on the other side. And even a wall which had been built could not prevent this information from being exchanged. Because the satellites were in orbit, anyone could get the information from the satellites. And I think that's uh, to a degree what led to the breakdown of the Russian Empire, they just could not keep this information, the way we live, the way we do business, they could not keep that away from their people.